is task number one done. I now have a, a result source called muse feed. And I actually need to just come back in here quickly because I need to get the ID of this muse feed out of the URL. And I need to decode it. I'm going to use this in PowerShell in a moment. So let's go and decode this. Let's go and search for URL decoder and let's see if, let's try say this one, URL code.org. Decode a string that has been URL, URL encoded. So if we put that in, decode, lovely. Now we've got the ID that we need of the result source. In fact, I'll leave that there. We'll come back to it. So we have our result source. We have the ID of that result source. Let's turn our attention back to PowerShell. Now, another of the built-in commandlets with PowerShell is this lovely commandlet called submit PNP search query. Um, now, this PM, submit PNP search query takes a few different uh, parameters. For example, um, if I actually, the first and obvious parameter is the query. So if I was to search on the name of one of the cats that I know my daughter has put into her uh, app, um, I'll put in Jessica. I can also specify how many results that I want to have uh, come back. So if I said in this case, I want to have 20 results. And finally, the result source. If I now find source ID, that is where I paste the ID of the result source into, whoops, into PowerShell. So let's move that across so you can see it a bit better. Okay. That probably is enough for now. Let's actually just see what happens. Um, and so it has come back and given us a whole bunch of interesting data. And it's given us all sorts of properties, information about the query we did. And importantly, it's come up and said the row count is 11. We have received 11 results with a query of Jessica. So let's see if that actually matches the result source firstly. So let me go back to this result source. We'll come back into here. We'll come back to the query builder. And this time I'm going to do a more advanced test. If I click the test tab here and actually type in, uh, go show more, and then type in Jessica, and then do, do a query test. So I've typed in Jessica, and we're going to test the query, and there is 11 results, entirely consistent with what is being reported in uh, PowerShell. So another thing I'll do, I'll just rerun this command again and add one more parameter, which is relevant results. So what this does is this basically says, um, don't worry about giving me all this other interesting metadata, just bring back the results. So if I run this command, you are now seeing the actual live search results that's being returned from SharePoint. So not bad, one command basically, and you can do a query against a SharePoint in any way that you uh, want. Uh, another thing that we'll do, let's actually sort these results. So there's a parameter called sort list. We're going to sort these results based on uh, last modified time in descending order. So last modified time, if you actually look in the results here, among the various things that come back from the search is last modified time. So if we search in descending order, we'll get most relevant, most recent search results. So the way that's done is, in fact, that parameter is sort list, which means it actually wants an array. There's a number of parameters you can sort by. Um, an array in, Power App, in PowerShell is an at with the squiggly brackets. So let's just put in last modified time. So we'll sort by last modified time, and we're going to sort it into descending order. Descending. Let's just keep making this screen bigger as we go, like it all on one line. And we close our curly uh, bracket, and let's see what happens. We submit, and oh, I forgot something. What did I do? It looks like, ah, oh, I've got a quote issue. Let me just rerun that. All right, that should be happier. I press enter, and back comes a whole bunch of results, which I assume is coming in um, last modified time. In fact, we can test that by going where um, last, in fact, no, not where, we go select last modified time. And if I've typed that in properly, you can see there is a whole bunch of results come back. There's 11 of them, I bet, and you can see that they are from most uh, recent time to oldest time. Fantastic. 
So we have now got a query that successfully queries the uh, SharePoint search engine. So now if we go back to my conceptual diagram, you can actually see, here's my conceptual diagram. You can see that we have a result source and we have a PowerShell commandlet. So now it's time to turn it into an Azure function. So let's take care of this bit.